World War I. The war that changed the warfare forever. Most know it as the Industrial War because it was the first war that relied heavily on mass production. Plants produced weapons at astonishing rates. Planes ruled the skies and tanks controlled the ground. Trench warfare was also new. But the most feared weapon of all was not a massive death machine, but a gas. Today we'll be discussing what is arguably the most terrifying weapon of World War I, poison gas. On April 22, 1915, German soldiers released clouds of gas on the Allied troops in Ypres. This would be known as the first major gas attack in history. The gas of choice was chlorine gas. When chlorine gas is inhaled, it reacts with the water inside the lungs and damages the delicate tissues inside. When a soldier inhaled the gas, it would irritate the eyes, and the nose, throat, and lungs. The soldiers were quite unprepared for the gas, and as a result, it killed over a thousand soldiers. It was a shock to everyone. No one had ever used gas before in war. Chlorine gas, however, had its disadvantages. First of all, it was water-soluble. Soldiers would pour water or urinate on strips of cloth and cover their nose and mouth. This neutralized the gas, making it harmless. The gas's greenish cloud was also very easy to spot. It also needed high doses to kill, otherwise it was just an irritant. Phosgene was the next gas used. It was an irritant, but six times more potent than chlorine gas. Phosgene was much stealthier than chlorine gas. It had no color and smelled of moldy hay. It took a couple of days before the soldiers would realize that something was wrong. Their lungs would slowly fill with fluid, essentially drowning them on dry land. Its only drawback was the time that it took for the gas to kill. It sometimes took up to 48 hours for the victim to die. Yet, Phosgene was responsible for 85% of the deaths caused by chemical weapons during World War I. The last and most infamous chemical weapon is mustard gas. It is known to have a mustard color, hence the name. It is a blistering agent. Like Phosgene, it takes a while for the effects to show, but when they do, the victim will experience burning in the eye or permanent loss of sight, coughing and shortness of breath, and blisters on the skin. Mustard gas is classified as a blistering agent, since its calling sign is large blisters on exposed skin. The mortality rate for mustard gas is low, only about 2 to 3 percent, but those who inhale it deal with severe long-term damage. Mustard gas was first used at the Battle of Flanders in July of 1917. This gas was even more terrifying than the others because of the horrendous blisters it would produce. At first, the soldiers were totally unprepared for a gas attack, but soon they developed preventative measures. Soldiers were handed cotton pads soaked in sodium bicarbonate. This neutralized chlorine gas for about five minutes. The French eventually added goggles to protect the eyes, and the English made hoods that would encase the entire head. But the Germans invented the first modern gas mask. The gummy mask was the first full face mask. It was airtight, which allowed for better protection. It also featured interchangeable air purifying systems. These cartridges would have charcoals or chemicals that would neutralize the gases. The Allies introduced the new mask to their troops on December 6, 1916. This mask would protect the soldiers for up to five hours making it much more effective than the simple cloth straps used previously. In January of 1918, a new, more efficient mask was used. The ARS, or MCG mask, was the best protection the soldiers could receive. Air purifying cartridges would filter out the gas more effectively than ever. The soldiers finally had a viable solution to the gas. Gas alarms were also used. Germans used gas alarm gongs to warn troops of gas. Chemical warfare was not intended to kill masses of soldiers, but to strike fear in the hearts of men in the trenches. They knew that the constant fear of being gassed would be exhausting to the soldiers. World leaders began to fear chemical warfare and began discussing how to stop it. The Hague Declaration of 1899 and the Hague Convention of 1907 outlawed the use of poison or poisonous weapons. But by the end of World War I, over 124,000 tons of poison gas had been produced. Public outcry and fear of the horror caused by chemical warfare made world leaders question how to prevent this. In 1925, the Geneva Protocol was signed, banning all use of chemical and biological weapons in warfare. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribed.